All right, welcome back to part seven. Um, I'm going to change the format slightly in this video, in that um, I'm going to show you uh, what I've done rather than step you through doing it, just so it's not long and slow and boring. Um, and you're, I'm going to supply the code. You can find that in the description um, of this video on YouTube. Um, you just download the part seven, and you'll get the finished code, so you'll be able to look through it and see. Um, see how things are done but I'm going to explain real quick and, uh, and show you what we've done so um, what I've done basically is uh, we now have teams so uh, you can join um, either a red team or a blue team and um, there's team spawns now as well so um, when you spawn in as one of the teams you are able to uh, spawn in at one of the random spawn points um, there is uh, you can't kill your own team um, you can only kill the other team and um, yeah that's pretty much it so I'm gonna go through that right now and uh, show you how that's done you'll be able to look at the code and see if you can uh, make some further improvements on it so the key concept behind the uh, teams is that the players get given uh, custom properties um, properties are one of the key elements inside photon unity networking for been able to um, store a dictionary within for the player which uh, describes some of uh, the properties that they might need um, it could be for what type of gun they're carrying or what hat they have or what armor they have um, and the way it works is uh, just like this so um, basically you create a player properties hash table and it's just a dictionary it's just a, a key uh, which could be anything and then a value and in my case it's a team value and it's either a zero or a one based on the um, which team they are blue or red and um, so this integer value gets stored with the player um, um, when they click the button when they click the particular button they'll be given that particular value for that particular key and then in the game manager they spawn the correct one in so you'll see inside the game manager that um, they look for the custom properties of team look for that value and if it's team zero they spawn the blue player in if it's one they spawn the red player in so uh, that's the basic concept behind it some of the other changes that i made um, within that uh, is in order to make it work is i needed a spawn manager as well um, so the spawn manager i wrote um, i'll just quickly go over the spawn manager it's literally just an instance um, so that it can be accessed um, from other functions, from other um, classes, and uh, it just gathers together some of the spawns. Um, the inside you'll see inside the game. Um, if I just quickly go to the game scene, you'll see that I made a bunch of spawn points, and um, those spawn points either have a blue spawn tag or a red spawn tag, and the spawn manager will um, simply just find the array of red spawns and find the array of blue spawns and then um, give you the right transform back for that and that's used inside the game manager to spawn as in um, for the correct team and it's used inside of the respawns inside of the health script as well so there's just a, a few lines of change that I made in that one um, the uh, you may wonder how I managed to get the um, the layers working for the for the, the the no team kills working. So the way that I did that was if we just show you quickly the um, players. So um, I created two different um, players and just gave them different colors based on whether they're blue or red. Um, and I added in um, one minor thing inside the gun script, which is an ignore layer mask. So the blue player um, is. I double click him the blue player is on the blue layer so the, the layer is blue team and I just created those with um, add layers uh, the red the red player is on obviously the red team and the gun script needed some minor changes with an ignore layer and I'll just quickly go to the gun script to show you so the gun script had an ignore layer um, just right here so it's just a public layer mask and um, well that gives you um, it's kind of cool um, if you do a public layer mask it allows you to show you the drop down so that you can choose the layer that you want or layers multiple layers can be added to the layer mask as well um, and the way that once your layer mask has been set for a particular um, 
particular gun, uh, then we use this little squiggle sign, um, the tilde sign, uh, and that just basically says it's not this. So we want to raycast and everything but this, and this is how that layer works. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The um, the uh, network manager. Um, I just want to quickly cover how this works. So we've created the dictionary and we uh, set the custom player properties. I had to add um, a little bit in here just to make sure that the custom property wasn't already, or the custom key wasn't already there. So if the if it already has a team, then you want to just uh, change it to the value that it gets set. And I just wanted to show you how that worked as well because I thought this was quite um, quite simple and elegant. The um, if we go back to the lobby scene, you'll see that the buttons here have um, the on-click event, and the the join team function that you, we just looked at is given an integer. And obviously, for each of the buttons, you can pass a different value, and so that gets passed into the button. So when we run the join team, this team value gets set correctly based on the button that you press. So um, yeah, th this one was basically this part here was just to make sure that if you happen to exit the game and you want to join in as a different team um, it won't cause an error and it will be able to just switch that that custom property uh, to the new value that you want for your um, for your team and then it, when you run the game manager when the level loads it will spawn in the correct um, the correct instance for you uh, the last little minor change was just this network player manager. It's a weird one. I don't know if I needed to do it or not, but um, it did recommend inside of uh, Photon Unity Networking Demo that we have a static local player instance that uses a don't destroy and load. Um, that way, when the uh, game is reloaded, so if the um, if sorry we're back in the game manager, if the game is um, reloaded uh, as it recommends inside the demo that um, when a new player enters or a new player leaves the game uh, that the level is reloaded um, and so you need this network player manager so that the instance persists across the reloads so that the player will still be there when uh, the level reloads and obviously reload level is only done by the master client so yeah it seems to clear things up a little bit um, it's a different format that I'm using so uh, just please comment in the um, comments inside of YouTube there uh, if there's if you prefer this format um, the code will be supplied to you as well so that will be um, up on github and you'll be able to see the link in the description so uh, yeah leave some comments if you like the new format and uh, I'll wait till I see hear back from some people to, whether we continue with this way um, I'm looking forward to continuing um, making this and maybe we can add in some ca animated characters next and maybe uh, some of the level design as well.